Hola. I have been really, really busy. Busier than I've ever been in my entire life, I think. And we have a lot to cover, so buckle up. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about using AI or artificial intelligence as a tool to steal someone's vocal cords. And that technology admittedly is a cool magic trick. And like most cool magic tricks, after you see them a few times, they get boring, especially once you figure out what's going on. There are also some major glaring ethical issues with voice cloning, and we're gonna have to dig pretty deep into that. And another thing that I need to address is the implications of turning Lucy's voice into a human voice. No, it cannot be ignored. It needs to be addressed. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some mind-blowing tech that will be publicly available and accessible to most musicians very soon. The Joe Rogan experience. You should really try jujitsu though. It'll clear your psoriasis right and up. I saw this cookie and I wanted it so bad, but- Treat yourself. Some of my viewers may have seen video clips of me having conversations with myself through the voices of Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson, and you could probably guess that I've been in this world for a minute. But actually, my relationship with neural nets and music goes back about seven years when Google's team was preparing the pre-release of something called Magenta. And to use that back then, you had to install Linux. In 2016, on my birthday, I bought myself three GPUs and a really, really strong, delicious Oreo-flavored beer. And I managed to morph this with this and then modulate it with this. And it sounded like this. And eventually released on an album like this. Also around that time, I got really obsessed with cloning my voice into a text-to-speech engine, and I was just blown away by it, and listening to it today is so underwhelming. This is my voice after only two epochs in an audio neural network. However, as I keep training it, it'll sound more and more like Ben Jordan. I thought maybe it would sound better as I said things like botch or synthesizer. So fast forward to 2023, there's better algorithms, there's better training, there's better computers with better specs, and there's an ever-growing list of startups offering voice swapping. But still, the majority of the time, it doesn't sound convincing. Saved a wretch like me. Saved a wretch like me. Voice.ai. <laughs> Voice register. Register. <laughs> Drew Barrymore, a different Drew Barrymore, Billie Eilish. I could sound exactly like Barack Obama for only 4,600 coins of a denomination that this app made up. Hello, I am Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States of America. And I'm here today to address you about the Affordable Care Act. Hello, I am Barack Obama, the 44th President of the United States of America. This is Kits.ai, which claims to pay artists, but also has royalty-free artist voices and... Still yeah, I can't play that on my YouTube channel. That's literally a Dr. Dre song. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Dre Day is probably not royalty-free. Royalty free. Probably not royalty free. Royalty free. Wow, that's quite the library of... Something tells me that Taylor didn't give them permission. <laughs> These are the most popular ones. Oh, oh, Adolf Hitler. Yeah, great. Why would you have Hitler's voice and why would it be so popular? Like, oh man, my Hitler impersonation isn't quite the hit it used to be at parties. This will be a good upgrade. Hey, everybody. I'm Adolf Hitler. Time to do a keg stand. I have a feeling that this is using RBC inference. I actually don't know that, but it's a pretty small open source model. They could actually run in Windows. I am such an elite hacker. Actually, wait a minute. Are these... Are they using Framer? If you're not familiar with Framer, it's like a Squarespacer Wix competitor. It's just a no-code website platform. Ooh, they have artificial intelligence ones. <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah. So about a year ago when making these, I was thinking about why voice cloning hadn't gotten good enough for actual music production. And the answer is, 
laziness. There's just a general lack of quality control. If you just put up a website where a random person can upload various samples of their voice and it automatically makes a data set, why would you expect it to feed you back studio quality sound? Every voice is different. Every microphone model is different. Every AD, analog to digital converter, is different. Unless it's a lucky coincidence, your result will only be as good as the conditions and effort going into creating the data. So my friend Dan, who also happens to be drum and bass legend DJ Fresh, aka Bad Company, is also a software developer with experience in machine learning. and he hit me up with a weird proposition. Dan partnered up with some of his friends and acquaintances and developed an AI voice cloning workflow that actually sounds really good, mostly because someone who comes from a lifetime of top tier music production is meticulously overseeing the voice models. But the missing piece of the puzzle required to grow the technology in the music production space and maintain that level of quality is the economics of it. Dan's core foundation of this project is to be fair to artists and performers. He's well aware of my beliefs and arguments about what tends to happen when capitalism and art collide, and he wanted me to be involved in solving that last piece of the puzzle. So I had an epiphany. I'm going to be skimming over a lot here, and this is grounds for a future video anyway, but the nature of copyright law is what makes Taylor Swift have to re-record her music in order to be fairly compensated for it. Now, the terrible and shitty behavior that major labels and media conglomerates tend to be famous for happens because they're built on a foundation that works around and lobbies for legislation that favors them. Earlier this year, a court decision ruled that things that are generated with AI cannot be copyrighted, and that major labels or media conglomerates don't really have that much power at all with AI. Taylor Swift can license her AI-regenerated voice to anyone, and her labels or publishers can't do a thing about it. A lot of people and members of the media see what's happening with AI as a disaster for musicians, and the level of fear-mongering is sometimes a bit overwhelming, but given the history of exploitation in both the music and tech industries, it's completely justified. Okay, glass half full. For the first time in like 60 years, musicians have this clean slate. It's the Wild West. We can actually build something based on what we learned from the mistakes of the last century and improve things. And maybe, just maybe, we can set a standard. More on that later. Let's finally see some practical uses of AI in music production. Okay, so Amazing Grace, we all know this song. Amazing I'll sing it in the key of A. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Great, now I will sing a monotone version only in the key of A, meaning A is the only I'll note I will sing. And then I will duplicate that recording a bunch, use elastic pitch and harmer to change the pitch however I want in post-production. I've created these harmonies, but if we feed each one of these individual files in for inference or voice cloning now, it will sound like a really nice vocoder. So before we do that, we can open up Fruity Formula Controller and put in some basic trig, map it to a controller with a quick expression there, and now we have natural sounding vibrato. I see. We can humanize the timing of each layer of harmony so it sounds more natural, and I'm actually going to overdo it for the example so it sounds more like a slightly drunk choir than a tightly synchronized professional choir. But now I'm found. Now we can feed each layer into a different vocal model, primarily using male voices since I'm harmonizing below my lead vocals. I once was lost. By the way, in my workflow, after setup, all of this can be scripted and accomplished in about two minutes. Let's pan the voices around a little bit and then stick it into a very slight room reverb, and here we go. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but
Okay, so let's take that amazing Grace lead vocal that I recorded and put it over some piano. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. What if I wanted to license that to a television show, and what if that television show also was syndicated or aired in India, where the vast majority of television shows are in Hindi? Well, this is a very new, potentially proprietary workflow that I've not seen anywhere else, but here goes nothing. I do Finally, as a stress test, I took a song that I made some years ago where my lyrics are basically obscured and mumbly. I took the mumbling vocal stems and I managed to get this out of it after running it through the system and layering the vocal output. And, as promised, we need to address turning Lucy's voice into a human voice. You see, Lucy gets really pissed off at Cora when Cora wakes her up from a nap, so I figured this would be the perfect time to put a microphone in her face. Wow. Ah, beautiful. Let's talk money. Okay, so what I just showed you, in my opinion anyway, is an impressive first step at actually using AI in a useful, inspiring way in music production. And it's primarily because of the hard work and due diligence in the process of training and tweaking the voice models and datasets rather than a revolving door of selling whatever models your users upload for free. There's obviously still a lot of room for improvement, but professional standards bring professional results. Above anything else, VoiceSwap AI is an experiment to help set a standard standard for how to deal with AI and artists moving forward, and my role there is helping design a system that pays artists and vocalists fairly enough to where the voice datasets organically grow, to include everything from unique regional voices to famous pop vocalists to even famous deceased musicians while compensating their estates. Ideally, that compensation shouldn't be that different from what I or investors get as equity holders of the project, an optional royalty pool of dividends. With something like Spotify, the musicians who aren't in the top 5% or so are competing with each other as the network grows, so much that many are willing to forfeit their royalties altogether to get prioritized by the algorithm. All right, so alternatively, imagine if you put your music on Spotify and it was tethered to the market market cap of the company. When Taylor Swift or Drake got on board, your royalties would rise with the value of the entire system. And hypothetically, this would be on top of being in control of your own licensing. So if you wanted to charge $200 for somebody to use your voice, or if you wanted to negotiate 20% of the streaming earnings from the song it's used on, you can still do that. If you don't want your voice being used in a pharmaceutical ad, that should be your right. However, at the current time of me making this video, if you're a vocalist, that is not your right. Anybody can scrape the data of your voice and use it however they see fit. But if your data set is behind the favorable terms and conditions of a platform, you can then reserve that right. And if your voice showed up in a Viagra ad, the person who used it would be indemnifiable or capable of being litigated in civil court. And by the way, this is still an evolving proposal that probably sounds simple enough if I explain it to you here, but it's actually really complicated when you write it all out and every single time you make a tweak, a lawyer has to make sure that it can actually work. Obviously, all of this is a lot bigger than me. 
and it's a lot bigger than the expanding team that's working on voice swap, so none of it's concrete yet and there's going to have to be a lot of tweaking, but this is really important. It feels like musicians and performers missed the boat with streaming and social media integration of their music. And this year we're seeing a lot of artists and even unions demanding media conglomerates to fairly compensate them in regards to AI. But due to the recent copyright ruling, it turns out that even some of the biggest artists in music don't actually need their record labels for anything in regards to AI. And that's good news. When it comes to music and audio and voice, the best data sets with the best quality will require your consent and your terms if you're a vocalist or a musician. Okay, that concludes my AI manifesto. This is incredibly useful, and as somebody who is pretty skeptical of AI's audio quality, this is already a tool that I wish I had for the last 25 years of my career. Finally, it's more than a fun toy or a magic trick. If you're a music producer and you're starting to see an overwhelming array of AI music tools, you should make sure that the data sets are being made in collaboration with the artist or instrument player. Of course, that's the more ethical way to do it, but you're also going to get a lot more value for your money. Do you want sounds that were hacked together from noisy stem separation algorithms, or do you want sounds that were made from hours of custom curated high quality data? It turns out that's why these tools haven't shown up in many professional settings. Just die. By the way, this isn't a sponsored video. I haven't been asked to make it by anybody. I certainly haven't been paid a dime to make it. In fact, if you couldn't tell by now, I'm very passionate about the project and have put a bunch of time into it. I'm on the voting board. I own equity in the company. I want to make sure that AI is compensating artists correctly, which is a great reason why I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I realize there are probably a lot of questions, some which have answers and some which probably need answers, and I'm open to them. And of course, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything, this video has no sponsors and this channel is a nonprofit organization. My Patreon is full of content, discount codes, and best of all, a monthly songwriting challenge. And you can be involved for as little as $1 and support this type of material. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.